Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. So, uh, how did I first hear about Discogs? Well, the same way that everybody else, uh, I just kept noticing these uh, things in in the net that uh, see if Discogs have that one available, see which, uh, if Discogs uh, says which pressing it is and so on. So, at some point uh, I was looking for a couple of uh, uh, albums and I decided to go see if Discogs had them. And I ended up buying two LPs, uh, one from uh, two different uh, sellers each. Don't remember which the other one was, but the other one was uh, Ron Wood, now Luke. And within the next few weeks I did receive the other one, but I didn't receive the Ron Wood. And I uh, wrote to the seller and they came back very apologetic, to, uh, saying that they had forgotten to mail it to me and they were willing to refund me everything. But I said that, forget about that, just mail me my record and soon thereafter I got it. But after that, I stopped buying from Discogs for about uh, maybe two or three years. Uh, but that bad experience wasn't the reason. The reason was that uh, uh, when I tried to buy something, I looked for the postage. And there were different things. For example, if I went to look at, okay, how much is the postage? It might uh, just say that one CD costs this much and nothing else. Or they might be the, uh, nothing at all, they just said that write to me and ask. So I did that a couple of times, a couple of times they replied to me, a couple of times they didn't re reply to me at all. Or they may be like, a, uh, for example, just the price for one CD, nothing else. So if I'm buying a 7-inch single, how do I know how much that costs? Or even more infuriating thing was that there might be some sellers that had like, dozens and dozens of different prices there, but they were all regarding one country. For example, there might be like 50 different price variations, but they were all regarding postage within Germany. So that kind of thing just put me off. I went to eBay, there was always price there. As soon as you decided to want to something, there's price for it, and that's that. So. Yeah, I just stopped buying uh, until maybe a couple of years ago I started buying. I still haven't bought, bought many, I bought maybe 20 times or so. But once I started buying there, there was always that when you bought something, it said, do you want this uh, item to be removed from your want list and added to your collection? Now, I didn't even know what that meant, but uh, since it said my collection sounds good, let's do that. So I started doing that and, and then it was several months ago, I started wondering that what does it actually mean that it's my collection and how do I access it? And also uh, I wondered that how can I add more records there? Because I know that the, the idea is that you put your own rec collection in, into Discogs. So I pulled one of my CDs out there and I found out how it's done. Okay, that's simple enough. But after that, uh, it, it took still like several months that I put uh, like one CD or two CDs every now and then until I had put about 30 CDs in there and I decided that, okay, I'm going to start doing this. Uh, over the years, uh, I have uh, done several times in different uh, ways that I have uh, cataloged all my uh, vinyl LPs, EPs, CDs, DVDs, VHS, uh, but never singles. So that is the one thing that I am looking forward to the most that I will put in my singles. So far I have put about 30 singles or so. Uh, I have also put only about 15 DVDs. And that's the one thing I have to say, that uh, if you want to start collecting uh, music in a cheap way, go with the music DVDs. Uh, out of those 15 DVDs, only one has been worth more than 10 euros. and. Only one other is close to 10 euros. The uh, rest of them are like uh, four, <laughs> four, four or three euros. So it seems to be a very cheap way to go if you want to collect uh, music DVDs. Okay, uh, let's move on. Like, what was the first surprise regarding Discogs? And it was this one. Classic band and a classic album, LA Woman. Uh, what's the medium price for this one? It's zero. Uh, and I was wondering, like, how is it possible? It, it's a classic album that it, it, it has to soul sell this album. That, that, that's no question about it, that it, it has sold. 
and it must have sold a lot. And then I found out that the price that they give for these is the exact pressing. So this exact pressing hasn't sold at all on Discogs. That's why it doesn't have any price. Okay, the second thing was uh, like the things that I don't understand about uh, Discogs. And first ex uh, experience was taste. Now this is ordinary CD pressing from 1992. And there are, I don't know, dozens or dozens of uh, different versions of this uh, on Discogs. But when you come to like identifying the exact copy that you have, is that you have to go through the matrix numbers here. And uh, when you go look at uh, some CD, like for this one, exa for example, and you go look at the matrix numbers, they may be like a, like a dozen different variations to those, and they are all considered to be the same pressing. So why, like for example in this occasion, why is this not, when everything else is the exact same information, except for some very, very minor detail, what makes this a different pressing? I just, I don't understand that. Okay, the se second thing was basically this is a, like a ordinary thing about uh, selling records, but since uh, this box is supposed to be about record enthusiasts, you would think that this this uh, this kind of a thing would be like a uh, uh, not common thing. So this is Jimi Hendrix Band of Gypsies. Uh, how much is the medium price for selling this one? It's zero. But there is one copy available for sale and the price is 70 euros. So if the record hasn't sell, sold at all, what makes you think that this would be worth 70? Like I, I would not expect this kind of thing to happen in Discogs. Uh, okay, then... No, let's stay within this one. Okay, then... This is KISS, Rock and Roll All Night, the original US pressing. Uh, there are two pressings of this uh, first pressing of this single, and they are identified by different matrix numbers. But uh, this one includes both of them. The A side includes one matrix number from one pressing, and the B side includes matrix number from the other pressing. So which one do I have? Or do I have both pressings on one single? And then, again, this is just something that I don't understand about collecting. And this is DAD's second to most recent uh, LP. And this is about 60 euros, okay? A uh, bit surprising considering how recent uh, LP this is, but okay, so that's how much it costs. But I wouldn't expect that to be like a rarity. So when this one, their debut single or EP, Standing on a Never Never, how come this one is only about 15 euros? Like this is much more rare, this is much more older. Why isn't this uh, valuable then? I don't know. Okay, um, then things that are, I would, I knew or I should have known at least. This is uh, Jim Morrison and American Prayer, and this is so-called uh, Frankenstein version. The sleeve here is from 1979, but the vinyl inside is from 1991. So yeah, uh, I was kind of expecting that to happen, but they, so far that's the only one that I, has happened to me. And another thing was Japanese CDs. This is Marquis, the great Memphis sound. Now, because everybody talks about Japanese pressings, now, how great they are and how everybody wants them, I was expecting them all to be valuable, but they aren't. I have about 10 CDs and about half of these Japanese pressings aren't worth much of anything at all. This was about five euros or so. So, yeah, I should have expected that, but I just hadn't given any thought to it. Okay, uh, then, uh, just as I had started like, putting these in, uh, I had a small 
uh, exchange with uh, Mr. Hall of Fame, and he said that he had uh, put his, uh, I think it was vinyl LPs that he had put in, and he said that it had been a good way to reintroduce his cole uh, collection to himself. And with these next two, I came to find out that for myself. This is uh, a compilation of, uh, you he heard them here first, rock icons before they were famous. So, as soon as I put this, pulled this out from the collection, I remembered, yeah, okay, this is one of these, you heard them here first, which is uh, uh, compilations which include the original versions of the songs that you know by other artists. Uh, so the original versions remained unknown, so the famous hit versions are the ones that you expect to be the originals, but they aren't. So these are, this is a bit different, these are artists that became famous later on, but in their early years they were unknown. Like David Bowie, for example, this one includes Liza Jane as David Jones with the King Bees. And there's uh, Lou Reed as Louis Reed. Uh, the band as uh, Levon and O'Hawks, so they're very early recordings. So I didn't remember that I had a compilation like this, so that was first surprise to me. But the second one was a huge surprise to me. It was only a day or two before I pulled this out of, from the shelf that uh, I was in YouTube and uh, I had listened to Nancy Griffith before on YouTube, so but I hadn't listened to it in a long time. But sometimes they just reappear on your feed. And this album came on my feed, and I looked at it, uh, and I decided, to, okay, I'll listen to one song. And I go through, through the songs, and I recognized the song, Traveling Through This Part of You. And I was, okay, I recognized the song, uh, song title, I'll listen to that one, listen to it, okay, yeah, good song, I'm going to buy that one. And I went through the local shops here, didn't find, I, I thought that, okay, tomorrow or day after I will go to uh, eBay and buy it. And then I pulled this one out. This is Nancy Griffith, Clock Without Hands. I have completely forgotten that I own this one. This is the first time that I has, this has ever happened to me, because I have prided myself in remembering everything that I have in my collection. And even though I really, really like Nancy Griffith, I had completely forgotten that I own this. I have to say that I am ashamed, ashamed of myself with that. Okay, next one I have titled as being the worst thing, but it's the kind of thing that I knew would happen, but still, <laughs> still, yeah. This is Fairport Convention Rising for the Moon. Now the thing that I really hated was finding out that the artists that I love and I respect, I respect very highly, because even though this is a rising uh, Fairport convention, to me, me this is Sandy Denny record. I have very high respect for Sandy Denny. So finding out that nobody else respect this one, this, this is about four euros or so, made me irritated, like, why don't you understand how great it is? You need to understand it. Pay for it. <laughs> God damn. Uh, and the other thing was, I, I am, I'm dreading the thought that I will come across more of these in my collection. This is the Cure Faith uh, 2 LP set. Now, when I bought this LP, I did notice that this is a uh, Russian pressing, so I was uh, kind of wondering that if this is uh, illegal pressing of this. But now putting this one in Discogs, I was glad to find out that, no, it's a legal pressing. Except that this particular copy may be a bootleg copy. Because this should include uh, barcode and the matrix numbers, but it doesn't include either one of those. Now, it may be that the barcode, barcode was originally on a sticker on a shrink wrap, because uh, Pink Floyd Records, for example, has that. They, they have shrink wrap, which includes uh, sticker and a barcode was uh, on nose, but this one I don't remember if it was or not. But okay, let's give benefit of doubt that, that that was the case with this one. But since this one doesn't include matrix numbers at all, I am suspicious and I don't like that thing at all. I'm I probably I'm going to buy uh, a single LP version, which I know to be 
a legal version. Okay, uh, then the many of you probably wonder which ones are the most expensive things in my co collection so far. Well, uh, I haven't really paid uh, close attention to it. Uh, sometimes I have noticed it, uh, sometimes I haven't noticed. Uh, so there may be some other valuable things that have went past me, but these are the ones that I have noticed to be the most expensive. Which CDs, uh, I was uh, surprised, I was expecting something like uh, Nuggets, a 4 CD box set to be most expensive, but it wasn't, it, it was uh, somewhere between 30 and 40. Uh, what was surprising was that the uh, this series of these uh, double CD deluxe editions, they were all expensive. Uh, the others were around uh, 30 to 40 euros, but this one for some reason was more uh, clearly more expensive, about 60 euros. This is a Thin Lizzy Thunder and Lightning Deluxe Edition. Uh, this was about 60 euros. I, I don't know why this one is uh, so much more expensive than the other ones, but yeah, so far this is the most expensive one that I have noticed. Um, on vinyl, uh, it wasn't it wasn't uh, surprising to find out that this was expensive. This is Beatles, Let It Be Naked, and this is the first pressing of this. I was surprised to find out that there were more pressings than one, but yeah, this is the first pressing and it's easy to uh, identify it as the first uh, pressing uh, by looking at the single included here. This was uh, about uh, 120 euros. And with all of these prices I am talking about the medium price. Okay, then uh, as the last thing uh, I want to tell, tell you what has been the most Pleasant, best surprises. Now, it hasn't got anything to do with the price because neither one of these uh, cost more than about five euros or so. But these uh, are the kind of things that make me very happy. First thing is Big Country Wonderland. Uh, yeah, uh, this is Canadian pressing. And when I was putting one, this one in, I found out that this is uh, a rare pressing uh, at least in a sense that this one includes six songs. Uh, it appears that majority of the pressings of this uh, in other countries included only four songs. So yeah, I was very happy to find out that this is a rare pressing in that sense. I, I don't know uh, if this one is hard to find in any way, but yeah, it made me very happy to find out that uh, because when I bought this, I, I had no idea that there was su such a thing, that there were four song and six uh, song editions. So very, very happy to find out that by chance I came across with six song. And the other one was this one. This is Elvis Presley, My Happiness, back with That's When Your Heartaches Begin. Uh, now this is uh, a repressing of Elvis's very first acetate recording. Uh, so when I found out this, uh, find this, I, I, I didn't think anything of it. I, I just thought that okay, somebody has taken the opportunity to press this, uh, as this press this one as a single because it's uh, copyright free. Didn't think anything of it until now when I was putting this one on Discogs, I found out that this is actually the third man record pressing because Jack White owns the rights to this recording. He made a, a record store day record uh, release a couple of years ago. Uh, as the, a perfect look-alike reproduction of that acetate as a 10-inch single. But this, uh, I had no idea that he had also released as a 7-inch. So yeah, I am very, very happy to find out that this one is a legal pressing of this, because Jack White owns the rights to this single. Okay, this one seems to be a long one once again. Okay, that's it for this time. Hope you like this. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Bye.